season. So it's just lots of busy things happening. I know it feels like we were just here, but like just we keep doing so so much and, and wonderful, amazing things. So thank you. Hello. Sorry. So we had our first ever curriculum night for preschool on November 7th. Um, we wanted to wait just a few weeks to, to get the kids into the groove before we invited everybody in, and we wanted to um, have you know beautiful artwork for the parents to see. So we it really was great. We had a really nice turnout. We started. Everybody came in here, and we had a nice. Um, overview of what the preschool curriculum was, um, and then the uh, parents had the opportunity to go into the to their child's classroom and get to see um, all of the different learning spaces and all the different learning areas and got to see um, what their children do every day. So it was really exciting. Thank you guys. All right, next item um, is our board discussion items. Would the superintendent please introduce the reports to the board? Yes, I'm really excited um, to introduce our first report. We have several representatives from our social emotional learning team. Um, and so they have prepared a presentation tonight for the board. Um, is over the last couple of months, you've been hearing from us talking a bit about our concerns over the emotional well-being of our students. Um, and this is something that we've been talking about for several years post-COVID. Um, and, you know, just in various discussions amongst the board, you know, wondering, well, you know, could we get a, you know, could we get a reminder of all the things that you do? And how can we help families who maybe don't want to take advantage of support at school, but may need some support outside of school? How do they access um, those supports? So I asked the team if they would mind coming tonight um, to just kind of walk you through what they do. It's a lot. Um, I couldn't be more proud of this group of individuals. Um, the work that they do day in and day out makes such a huge difference for our students. It's hard work. They're going to talk about some of the fun things they do, but a lot of the work that they do is, is very hard um, and thoughtful work on a daily basis. Um, so they're really special people. So I'm happy to have them here tonight. So I don't, I'm not sure who's going first, so I don't know who to introduce first, but come on up to the podium. And Mr. Lepak, if you can, um, their presentation should be loaded, if you don't mind assisting with that. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. Welcome, ladies. If you don't mind just introducing yourself and getting us started. Yeah. Uh, sure. So first and foremost, my name is Janine Lavadier. I'm one of the school counselors here at Fairview. I work with third grade through fifth grade. Hi, I'm Phoebe Redman. I am one of the social workers here at Fairview, and I'm working with preschool, kindergarten, and then sixth grade as well. And my name is Christina LaRossi. I could just talk loud. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> my name is Christina LaRossi. I work with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. This is my 14th year at Fairview. Um, and then we have a couple more of our team members um, who are not here tonight. We have Erin Lovett as our new school psychologist this year. Um, Carly Gross is our director of student services. We have two social work interns this year, which we are very grateful to have helping us, Mary Grace Stanton and Kat Metzger. And then also Stacy Glasgott is our first, second, and third grade social worker. Um, and she's not here tonight as well. And all of us actually, it's just us three in addition to Stacy, we're all located in services hub which is that new area that we had built with the construction and it was a huge thing for us because we've been separated in different areas of the building so now we're able to be together work together more closely um, on our FDL team so we're just going to talk a little bit about our services that we provide to our students um, so first this is our MCFS pyramid um, with the different types of supports that we offer to which groups of students. So the tier one on the bottom, this is school and classroom-wide services, which will talk about um, all of the things that are offered for all of our students here at Fairview. Um, tier two would be for students who need a little bit more support, a little bit additional. And then tier three, taking it up a level with students that need even more than that. And we'll kind of break that down into the different sections. So I know this is kind of a long list and I don't have to read it all to you, but you can see we are doing a lot of things for tier one to address um, the needs. 
needs of all of our students. So all of our students um, at Fairview are exposed to these programs, activities, um, special weeks that we plan. So I thought I could just talk about a few um, that I could just elaborate on a little bit. So Mr. Lopaka mentioned Snowflake. That is up there, that is coming up this Friday, and that is uh, a program that we've had now for I think five or six years, and that's uh, for our seventh grade students. It's a full day of students learning about empathy, doing some team building. Um, so that's something really special for seventh grade. So you'll see that up there. Um, we do social emotional lessons in the classroom. So the primary teachers will push into the classrooms and teach lessons. And for the middle school, we do second steps, which is our social emotional learning program. So we're in the classrooms a lot. We have students coming to our office for our different offices for different things as well. Um, we do special weeks throughout the school year. We have Ability Awareness Week, Bully Prevention Month, Mental Health Awareness, where we plan activities for students that they do often in advisory or in their um, regular classes. Uh, we have dress up days, special events. We use our boards in the hallway to post things as they come up um, to kind of show students about the different topics for those special weeks. Um, which other one should I touch on? Uh, we've done a f finding, kind, yeah. finding Kind Assembly, which was for our middle school um, girl students. We've done the past couple of years. Um, and that was kind of in response to talking about some girl relational aggression. We did a, a video and an assembly for that that the middle school students really seem to love. Can you expand upon the beacon alerts? I'm not sure, sure the board would know what that yeah. is. Mm -hmm. The beacon alerts, this has been something really helpful to us. The beacon alerts, um, this is our a system that we have where it notifies myself, our SEL team, our administration, and our tech director if students are looking up or have any activity on their computer um, that is related to self-harm, um, if they are looking up anything about violence, and it will send us an alert, and we're able to see what the students were doing, and then we can have a conversation with students to kind of assess if more needs to be done, and we need to find out more about a specific situation. Thank you. Yeah, and that all happens in real time. So yep. potentially a child is in a classroom at school. They could be at home on a school computer. Um, we get the alert and can intervene immediately, which is really helpful to us um, because sometimes we hear about things later and it's very hard to track down and find out what was going on, but this alerts us. And so right then and there, we can speak to the student, call home, whatever needs to happen. Yes, anything on the student. So um, something else we wanted to touch on is, you know, our just classroom management strategies. So this is used a lot in primary, but I also have some, you know, middle school teachers who are always interested in, you know, a little calm corner where they can go and just, you know, do some puzzles or do some mindfulness to help them to regulate their emotions. So CHAMPS is just an acronym. It represents, you know, voice levels. It represents, you know, are you sitting in your seat? Are you standing up and moving? It provides clear expectations for students on, you know, what the activity is, what the volume of the voices are. It's just a great way to help kids understand, like, what's expected of them in class, and it really helps manage behaviors. And, you know, if kids are anxious about not knowing how to work together in a group, this really helps provide structure for them. So they've talked a lot about students, but they also provide support for our faculty and staff members. Um, you know, naturally, people gravitate to this group when they might be having a personal issue, there might be something going on at school. Um, so, you know, they do also offer support to our staff and their colleagues. Um, and they also try to help all of us here in the building when we're having stressful days um, and help us stay calm and mindful. And uh, Wellness Wednesday is just one example of that, um, but it's a special day out of the year where the, the hub or the teacher's lounge it used to be is transformed into this just really peaceful, calm spot with healthy foods. And, you know, so just, uh, you know, a little thing, but, you know, it goes a long way because we're trying to model for, for people, you know, how you can help your own emotions and your own emotional well-being. But 
you know, I, I think probably more often than not, you probably do hear from, from your colleagues and staff members and they know the right things to say and how to coach people um, if they need additional support. So they're here for the kids first and foremost, but on a secondary level, they're also supporting our, our adults at the building. So, okay, I just wanted to Thank touch you, upon that. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, we appreciate that's it. That's a favorite throughout the year of yeah. wellness Wednesday. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I would like to talk a little bit more about our tier two services. So tier one's kind of our, um, that encompasses the whole school, right? Tier two is when kids need that additional support. So something really exciting that we got to do this last year and this year is we've been able to welcome therapy dogs into the building. And this is really great for our students. You know, it helps them work on a variety of skills. It helps them with impulse control, emotional regulation. You know, it puts a big smile on their face. We're a little selfishly happy we have the dogs around too, because who doesn't feel good when they're cuddling a nice, cute, fluffy puppy? Um, you know, we also do individual and small group interventions. So if we have referrals from teachers or, you know, families are reaching out to us with concerns, we might put together like a couple week um, group that targets certain things such as social skills, coping skills, conflict resolution, just to name a couple of things. We do lunch bunches, so if students are having a hard time connecting with their peers, we invite them to come to lunch with parent permission, of course, and you know they can play games, they can interact and connect with other students. We do restorative practices, so if students are you know having a hard time in school, we help them process, you know, like what could we do differently? What are coping strategies we can manage and um, to prevent this from happening again? We also have students that come down to us and they ask for peer mediation. So maybe they're having a hard time with their friends or they're having a hard time getting along with a classmate. So we always welcome students to come down and be able to talk through their problems and um, be able to figure out um, a way just so we can all get along and interact with each other in the building. I don't wanna read through the whole list because um, I feel like that's a little boring, but um, just to highlight on a couple more, we have a check-in and a check-out system. So, you know, some students really benefit from that mentorship, right? Having a trusted adult in the building who um, they can talk to about things they know it's confidential, um, it's someone who, you know, we're not here to judge, we're here to listen and support them any way we can. Um, Ms. LaRossi touched on, you know, our beautiful new area in the Student Services Hub, and we're so lucky to have a new sensory room as well. So this is a space where students can go, you know, if they have a lot of energy in their body, we have um, a little trampoline, a punching bag where they can get that out. Also some calming, like we have um, breath balls, we have um, different coping strategies in that room to help them to regulate themselves and also just have a quiet, peaceful place to go. And then tier three is the final tier. This might be the tier that you think of when you think of what a role of a social worker or a counselor might do. Um, this is when we meet with students individually, and that could be students that have IEPs or 504 accommodations. So we have set minutes to meet with them, um, usually individually or sometimes in group sessions. Um, so that's when we pull the students out of their classes and they come meet with us individually. Um, we also do crisis intervention, so when there is a crisis occurring, we are the ones that the students can come to to talk about what is going on, and um, we're the first line that usually hears about what's going on. Um, other SEL needs, we've talked about a bunch of them, but just supporting students that need that extra support, one-on-one um, -on -one support, and that could be movement breaks throughout the day. Um, I have some kindergartners that I pick up and bring to the sensory room just so that they can get some of that energy out and then go back to their classroom so they're ready to learn. Um, we work with the students' whole team, so that means working with their teachers and also their families. So we do a lot of communication with parents, whether that's emailing home or talking on the phone and having meetings. So it's definitely not just the student that we work with, but their entire um, ecosystem around them. So their teachers um, and their parents are a big part of that. We also do formal behavior plans. So if a student is having a hard time in the classroom, we take a closer look at what might be triggering that, what might be causing some of those behaviors, and how can we best support the student so that they are having all of their accommodations and needs met in the classroom. Um, we also do risk assessments. So if a student is um, 
in need of extra support and they might be going through something that is more serious, we are the ones that talk to the student and make sure that um, they are safe at home and also in school. Um, and then Christina talked a little bit about the community, but we also refer families and students to outside agencies. So that would be outside therapists or other SEL related um, services. So that's the tier three. And I think something important to note, a lot of this is planned. We plan our days, we have schedules, but there are a lot of things that change on any given day. So you could come in on a Monday and think that you have your schedule laid out, which students you're going to meet with, which classrooms to go to, but by the end of the day, it could be totally switched around. Um, a lot of in the moment decisions and just things to be flexible with, but just something to note that that's a big part of our day as well. Yeah, on some given days they have to triage. You know, if there's a student in crisis, everything stops and the focus is on helping that student and sorting out what's going on for that student. But it, they, they are probably some of the most flexible people in the building because on any given day, it could be lunchtime recess and something happens and now they have to drop whatever they had planned to go and, and work through that situation with the student, so. to have that parent permission before we start meeting more than three times. Mm -hmm. And then something, I think I updated the presentation that it's not on here, but um, there's a program, an organization called Care Solace that we have been um, fortunate to have. This is kind of like, I guess we could call it the middleman, um, an, an organization through North Cook. Um, and if there's any families or students that need help with housing, um, finding mental health services outside of school, um, medical insurance. This is uh, an organization that we can connect the family with and then they will look at their insurance or kind of what they need and help them find whatever it is that they need. And that's called Care Solace. So I got a question. Was How much of this uh, did, did this team develop? So are these tiers, did, did you guys cater this to, to Fairview? Did you build the tiers and what's, what's, uh, what each tier covers? Or? Are you referring, you mean the, the, triangle? the triangle? Yeah, for the triangle, yeah. The, the services at each tier. Yeah, so this is something that's implemented in most schools. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a good you know, structure to follow. Like um, for the Illinois School Counseling Association, it's on there for the social work as well. It's just a way to guide us in our practice and how to serve our students, how to support them as best as we can, and also break down those interventions for staff as well so they understand you know, what we can do in the building to help our students and staff. Yeah, I was gonna say it's very comprehensive, very well structured, and I think this provides you know, the support that children need to be successful at the school, so, so well done. Thank you. One question I've re received a lot over like the past month is there's a lot of parents that may not know how to reach out to you. Um, could be a language barrier, could be a culture barrier, could be feeling embarrassed or scared, I don't know. So a big part of this I wanted for us to be able to like have a plan for them to be able to reach out. So is there something that you recommend? Um, let's say they're having a crisis at home with their child or, or something that's not discussed in school, like how would they come to you? Yeah, I think um, parents reach out through email, calling. Um, sometimes they just go on the school website and, and look at the SEL team and can kind of see the grade levels. Um, we are present at the curriculum nights. Um, I, I don't think a lot of parents necessarily come to our room. We don't do a formal presentation, but we've had screens in the hallway. We try to make our our faces and our roles known amongst the parents in the community. Um, what was the answer? I also know that most teachers on curriculum night put together a slideshow for parents and we do share our information on there as well, our contact information, our phone number, what we do in the building. And you know, I have uh, friends outside of school who are parents and they always are asking me, you know, like I, I have concerns, I, I wanna connect with the um, SEL team but I'm not sure how. And um, you know, I always tell teachers and those friends, you know, connect with the teachers first, right? Mm -hmm. Like the teachers can always pass along their information to us mm -hmm. and then we can always connect with those families. 
That's exactly what I was going to say. Usually it's the classroom teacher who's sort of that first line. You know, that's the person that the family usually has a relationship with, and so they might be a little bit more comfortable with that classroom teacher who maybe their older child had before, and now they're there for a second. Um, but there are definitely barriers. Um, you know, mental health is a topic that, you know, some cultures and some families just don't feel comfortable with. Um, you know, we definitely see discrepancies between um, the acknowledgement of mental health issues in, in males versus females. There's a ton of research out there. Um, so it's, it's an issue, um, and I think all we can do is just continue to, you know, share the information, be present, make sure our teaching staff know how to help families that might need that extra help. Um, but, you know, this community is amazing. Not only the Fairview community, but the Skokie community has so many resources for families. There's really nothing you can't find here, but it's a mixed blessing because there's so much it gets confusing and they don't know where to go, how to get it. Um, but I would encourage any board member who's hearing from someone that isn't sure what to do, contact their classroom teacher, contact the principals, um, you know, whoever it is they feel comfortable with at school, reach out to them and, and we will absolutely help them get the help they need. Um, I would suggest, I think this presentation is wonderful. I would suggest to um, the principals to possibly include this in a digital backpack coming up so that people who aren't here tonight get a chance to, to look it over and maybe that sparks some curiosity or some questions that come their way and opens that door. And maybe just like a little guidance on like, you know, go to the teacher first or whatever, however you want to spin it just so they're aware. Um, it's just been common lately, so, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Please feel free to head on out. This is a good opportunity. You don't have to stay. <laughs> Next up, we have board policy review. It's the last chance, everybody. <laughs> Leave now, <laughs> forever hold your peace. Um, board policies, this is the second reading of board policies that were up for review. Um, these are policies that were recommended for revision um, from the Illinois Association of School Boards. We belong to the press policy service. Um, so that helps us really stay on top of changes. And um, we, we spoke about these last month. So all of the policies that are up for review, the five that, that you have in your board packet, all relate to changes in Title IX um, over the past several months. Um, you know, I would imagine you know, we'll continue to see some movement and some changes um, going forth. Um, however, these are the ones that we're looking at tonight. I'm happy to answer questions, take comments, um, but I would recommend that the board approve the policies at this time. Questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, lastly is the superintendent's report for November. I will just touch on a couple of items. Um, we had a really awesome strategic planning session a couple of Saturdays ago. Um, many members of the community, parent community, board members, teaching staff, uh, administration joined us for a full day planning session. Um, we spent from eight till three here on a Saturday and got a lot of good work done, had a lot of great conversations. Um, so we are, um, actually I received today a draft of the discussion and the notes from that. I haven't had a chance to review it just yet. My hope is to bring a draft um, strategic plan which would include a mission, vision statement, et cetera, um, forth to the December board meetings. So that will be forthcoming, but it was really a, a great day. Um, it, it felt really nice to bring people together to just talk about the future of our school and where things are headed. Um, so I, I hope those of you who participated, you know, felt that it was a worthwhile activity. Um, not sure if you have any comments that you'd like to make about it, but. I think it was nice to be in mixed tables with like other community and teachers and principals and Jeff. <laughs> it was, you know, everyone has a different perspective and it's, it was cool to hear different stories and different ideas and thoughts and, yeah, it was very, I, I really enjoyed it. It was really nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the biggest projects that we'll undertake this year um, because the plan, once it's approved by the board, 
you know, will be something that guides us for many years to come. So, you know, having those um, individuals who participated, and I think we had probably 35 people in the room that day, um, I'm truly grateful. It's important work, and, you know, those who participated will, you know, feel as though they had um, an, an impact on the future of the district, and, and that's the truth. You, you ha will have an impact, um, and it is going to be something that, you know, we look to often to help us continue to do good work here. So. Um, so that's strategic planning. Um, the, I will just note the Fairview's winter edition will be hitting mailboxes in January. Uh, we continue to have a variety of um, staff members um, with you know, personal issues that we're trying to work through with them, as well as students with uh, issues. Uh, this holiday season brings a lot of emotion forward, and so we, we always kind of see an uptick um, between the Thanksgiving break and the holidays of you know people you know feeling really stressed so we continue to support people in that way and then finally Cassio and his team are getting busy um, preparing for winter we have it I think it's here today <laughs> um, which you know we do all of our own snow removal so um, preparing the truck with the snow plow and the salt spreader and making sure we have an ample supply of salt to last us the whole winter etc um, so there's a lot of winterizing that we kind of do around this time of year um, but Cassio and his team do a great job of it so I think we're going to be in great shape so those are just a couple of highlights that I wanted to mention if board members have questions about anything else happy to answer any comments Thank you. All right, thank you, Cindy. Um, next item is our board committees and representatives. Um, Finance and Personnel Committee, there was no report due to the meeting being canceled. Um, EdRed Committee, Raphael, any updates? Sure, just wanted to update with, um, they had their annual kickoff meeting and uh, some of the annual initiatives that they're gonna be looking at this year. There's three, really. Um, the first one is the uh, upholding the state paid law provisions. So Ed Red is uh, working to create a legislative fix to preserve the state's uh, paid leave financial laws exemption for school districts. Uh, the second one is the dual credit quality act improvement. And the third one is the uh, deprioritization of school polling places. So those are the three initiatives that are really gonna be focusing on uh, for the 24-25 remaining of the year. That's it. Thank you. Um, Jackie, any updates from NTDSE? Uh, yeah, I just wanna uh, I think everybody saw this in their package, but NTGSE sent out a recognition for four individuals at Fairview. Uh, Brianna Ahn, Karen Schvoka, Lisa Hilgendorf, and Desiree Yokana, and they just uh, sending a thank you for going uh, above and beyond to the NTGSE community. And then, Christine, any additional updates for PTA? No, I'll just echo a big thank you to the admin and staff who helped with the Halloween um, party as committee chair. It was so nice to see Mike on a ladder hanging decorations and Karen Manning sort of the check-in line and Jordan helping set up games and just everybody, I mean, Mrs. Runkle, was, everybody sort of had an all-hands-on-deck approach. and. Um, it was just so grateful to have not only the community, but the admin and the staff come together to, to put up um, such a safe and, and fun event, I think, for, for the community. So thank you all. All right, next item is Freedom of Information Act requests. I can report that there weren't any Freedom of Information Acts received since the last board meeting. We also do not have any submissions for information items in correspondence this month. Um, next item is public comment. At this time, I'd like to invite members of the audience to address the board in public comment. Public comment period is des uh, designed to gain input from the public and not for immediate response by the board to the question or comment presented. If you wish to address the board, please come to the microphone, state your name, and a three-minute time limit will be set. The board secretary will keep time. And I can confirm that there were no online public comments received as well. Um, we're moving on to approval of action items. May I have a motion and a second uh, to approve board policy revisions as discussed? So, so move. I'll second. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Board Secretary, can you please call a roll call vote? Yes. Rafael Cavour? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Esther Tamura? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Sargon Guliana? Yes. Jacqueline Bujde? Yes. All right. 
Next item, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract extension for administrator. So moved. I'll second. Any questions or comments? No? All right. Would the board secretary please call roll call vote? Yes. Uh, Esther Tamura? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Sargon Guliana? Yes. Jacqueline Bougde? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Saji Philip? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Thank you. Congrats, Mike. Three more years yes. with you. We love it. <laughs> All right. May I have a motion and a second to accept the 2024 district, district audit report? So moved. I'll second. Mr. Fayer, would you like to present to the board, please? So I have 57 pages here. <laughs> um, I'll skip a couple, but for the most part, I'm kidding. I, uh, the audit came back finally. So we've had a few delays in recent years because of the number, the amount of federal dollars we've been getting in post-COVID. Uh, so there has been delays in the audit timing. Typically, we do the acceptance of the audit in October, but it's been delayed the last few years. Um, the audit came back clean. Everything was, uh, was up to par as far as their cons uh, our auditors considered. <clears throat> it will be submitted to ISB uh, shortly and will be in line with what we're supposed to do as a district. Nothing out of the ordinary in the audit. I have copies for the entire board. Um, I have five, well actually I only have five copies right now. So unfortunately, two of you may not have one. But if you'd like one, I'd be more than happy to, to print one out for you or ask for another bound copy, just let me know. Um, there's nothing new to report in there. Um, if, there were, if you do want to talk about it or you find something in there that you want to talk about, please let me know and I'd be more than happy to spend the time doing that. Does anyone have any questions or would like an extra copy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, would the board secretary please call roll call vote? Sure. Saji Phillip? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Esther Tamura? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Sargon Guiana? Yes. Jacqueline Bougie? Yes. yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. All right. Very good. Um, next item is future consideration. Does anyone have any items they would like to share? May I have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting of Fairview Board of Education at 7.46 <coughs> p.m.? So moved. Second. Okay, Board Secretary, can you please call roll call vote? Yes. Esther Tamura? Yes. Christine Soika? Yes. Saji Phillip? Yes. Rafael Kavor? Yes. Jacqueline Bougde? Yes. Sargon Guliana? Yes. Diana Diakakis? Yes. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody.